The reputed landing of an alien spaceship near Moscow recently has once again stirred up the public debate about UFOs. Although the reports about 10-foot tall aliens have been dismissed as nonsense by most people, there are many who would argue that UFO landings can and have occurred, not only in the USSR, but in the US and other countries. Have UFOs been given a fair shake by science, journalism, and the government? George Knapp joins us now with part one of a cover story series, UFOs, the best evidence. George? Well, Gary and Mary Ruth, some people might object to the use of the words UFOs and evidence in the same sentence. However, there is now a staggering amount of information on this subject, collected not by crackpots, but by respected, mainstream, level-headed people who want to know what, if anything, is going on. What we've tried to do is sift through as much of this information as possible to see if there's anything to it. In part one of UFOs, The Best Evidence, we explore whether the subject has been treated fairly by the establishment. If you have a question, feel free to give us a call. Hi, you're next on the Billy Goodman thing on KVEG. The egg planted in Chicago, you remember that, huh? <laughs> and what was your encounter like, may I ask? Billy Goodman's yeah. radio talk show is heard nightly in 10 western states, stretching from Canada to Mexico. Previously, the topic of choice was Elvis Presley's present whereabouts, but the focus drifted into UFOs, and Goodman's uh -huh. phone lines have been lit up ever since. Oh, well, tell us about the last time when you were abducted, the, the very last time. Three hours a night, six nights a week, the calls come in. Some callers claim to have been abducted by aliens. Other callers say they are aliens. This is pretty wild stuff. <laughs> tell me about it. But this is what we get, and it goes on and on and on. The popularity of Goodman's show is but one indication of the persistent public hunger for UFO lore. Despite discouragement by government, science, and religion, this is a story that will not go away. Is it the most pervasive and long-standing mass delusion in human history, or is something else at work here? Prominent sociologists have argued that even if there are no flying saucers or extraterrestrials, the stubborn durability of the UFO legend makes it worthy of study. E.T. phone. Oh. The human fascination with extraterrestrials is reflected in our most popular films and in popular TV programs. E.T. books are often perched atop bestseller lists. UFO updates grace the pages of mass circulation magazines. There are UFO hotlines and E.T. newsletters. Flying saucers have invaded the comic strips. UFO researchers like John Lear play to packed houses at library lectures. UFO organizations stage annual symposiums at which conventioneers can buy UFO tapes and UFO keychains, hats, and booklets, and more. I was abducted by aliens, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Flying saucers are big business, but the profiteering seems incidental to the enduring interest. Millions of people who have nothing to gain believe in UFOs. The most recent Gallup poll shows that nearly 60% of college-educated American adults believe that UFOs are extraterrestrial craft. The higher the education, the more likely the belief in UFOs. We have a society today which accepts the basic notion of space travel, of visits by different kinds of beings to other places. That's a big step in just one generation. But it's not merely a matter of blind faith. More than 20 million Americans say they've seen a UFO. 70,000 new sightings are reported each year. Even the most ardent UFO converts will concede that up to 90% of these sightings are mistakes, misidentifications of planets, or of conventional aircraft, or of military flares, or weather balloons, or other little known natural phenomena. While it's true that nine out of every 10 sightings is probably wrong, it's also true that only one in 10 sightings is ever reported at all. In general, these sightings are made by normal, well-balanced people who have nothing to gain and much to lose by stepping forward. It was dark, there was three or four of us running along, and all of a sudden it was daylight, just brighter and all get out, and yet you could see over yonder that it was dark. A tremendous streak just shot out of nowhere from the right and, and basically tailgated this plane. Uh, and it followed the plane for a very short period, and then it just stopped. No noise, nothing. The same bright red color, and didn't, wasn't blinking or nothing. It was just like a ball of light. What I saw were these balls of light traveling from the west to the east, all the way across the sky. 
and there was lights all around it, the same color as the ship, and it was rotating. They were doing all kinds of maneuvers, um, zigzag movements, go fast this way and then that way, and then would flip over. And I saw this huge saucer-shaped vehicle, which uh, it was brightly lit, and it appeared to have uh, dark areas, uh, portholes of some sort. Did you see that? You know, everybody's, did you see that? You know, and everybody saw it, but nobody had an explanation. I do know what I saw. Uh, it wasn't a plane. It wasn't a plane, it wasn't a helicopter. It wasn't uh, a weather balloon. It wasn't a weather balloon, it wasn't a satellite. Swamp gas. It wasn't swamp gas. It wasn't any kind of, of light by itself. There was, there was an actual object. Many UFO sightings occur in broad daylight. Many involve multiple witnesses. The witnesses include pilots and policemen, even a president, people who are trained to be observant and whose judgment is trusted. The sightings date back to the dawn of recorded history in every country and every culture. UFOs have been around much longer than conventional aircraft, much longer than science fiction writers. There are even references in the Bible to UFO sightings. Some of this might count as evidence in a court of law, but it means very little to establishment science. Most scientists have little regard for UFOs, although few have studied the subject to any significant degree. Odd, considering that mainstream science now vigorously believes that intelligent life elsewhere in the universe is a virtual certainty. Even UFO skeptic Carl Sagan has estimated there may be more than a million advanced civilizations in our galaxy alone. Congressional hearings have delved into the possibility, and millions of dollars are spent each year listening for radio signals from deep space. But organized science declines to peek over the fence into its own backyard. The probability of there being another civilization, both near us and sufficiently close to us in evolution, that they would either can or would be willing to communicate, you know, seems to be a fairly rare thing. You know, just the probability suggests that that would be a very rare thing. Any scientist that takes the time to look at the data and the facts and the evidence accepts the fact that we have UFOs. You have to have an open mind if you simply make the statement that there's nothing to this thing and ignore it. People like Carl Sagan, who's a brilliant astrophysicist, he's never bothered to read the UFO material. To him, there's nothing there, so don't bother me with the facts. In more than 22 years as a hobby, of investigating famous mysterious UFO cases, reports, I have never found one that cannot be explained in prosaic earthly terms. Phil Class bills himself as the Sherlock Holmes of UFOs and is the world's preeminent debunker. He shows up at nearly all of the UFO conventions, a fly in the ET ointment. Phil Class dartboards are best-selling items at many of those same conventions. Class takes that as a compliment. His success at belittling or ridiculing UFO sightings is beyond question, but few people will accuse Class of sticking to the scientific method. Even UFO doubters concede that Class has been dead wrong in his explanations of some sightings, that he distorts astronomy for his own purposes, that he accuses UFO witnesses of being liars or hoaxers, even though he rarely investigates any sightings personally. Even experienced airline pilots, military pilots, can be grossly in error in what they think they've seen. Many UFO researchers are convinced that Class is a government agent. His years of work as editor for the well-connected aerospace mouthpiece Aviation Week and Space Technology is suspicious to some. I cannot believe that anybody could so persistently be wrong over and over again making claims which are false demonstrably and so forth without having been told or doing something that he feels is in the patriotic best interest of the country. He's not so stupid. In the 50s and 60s, it was standard practice for the intelligence agencies to recruit journalists. Now, Mr. Class, as the outstanding example of that, was, after all, unmarried, very fast typewriter, electrical engineering background, in Washington, D.C., all kinds of contacts, a perfect person to be a spy for either side, for that matter. And so if he wasn't recruited, somebody goofed. Have you ever worked for the government in any capacity? Never. Never, never been paid a penny, except when my dear mother died and I got a social security benefit. Phil Class and other debunkers don't have to work very hard to create doubt about UFOs. The subject has attracted more than its share of crazies over the years. The U.S. government has officially decreed that UFOs are bunk. Science has followed suit. Have they been studied to the extent that they need to be? I don't think they have been studied to the extent they need to be. Uh, you know, there, there, there really should be more study, but the, again, the problem is, is most credible scientists have other things that they feel safer doing 
you know, just because of the, uh, the, the fringe elements associated with uh, UFOs. The funding thing hanging over your yeah. head, too. I mean, you, yeah. you said you can't get Oh, it. hey, you apply to the National Science Foundation, you want to study UFOs, they're going to laugh and throw it out. Without question, there is a strong streak of wacko within the UFO field. Consider the tabloid headlines wherein psychics invite aliens to a Monday night football game or a girl gives birth to 52 UFO babies. Right there alongside the capture of a green Bigfoot and the wild Bill Hickok was gay expose. Also, psychics and channelers advertise that aliens speak to us through them. I'll tell you what, I'd like to see this sometime. Okay, that's why I'm here, bud. You mean you could do it now? Right now. And I want to ask for whatever information comes through to be of interest, perhaps even amusing, if that's called for. And whatever energy that comes through not affect the taping. Speaking. Well, who? I will respond to questions. Shapiro seems sincere enough, but admits there's no way to verify his claim, and he doesn't care much whether people believe him or not. This approach is a bit too casual for science. The same is true of big time journalism. Network coverage is quirky and condescending. So, was it? What was it? Way up there. Heaven only knows. And that's our news. Do you believe in UFOs? Nah. <laughs> Nah. An official Soviet government news agency has reported that a UFO landed recently near Moscow complete with 10-foot-tall aliens from space. The reporter said his source was a group of children, and a scientist said, don't believe everything you read in TASS. It's something that uh, people just don't want to deal with, the press doesn't want to deal with, and uh, people aren't going to listen to something unless um, uh, Dan Rather or uh, any of your big uh, press people are going to tell them about it. And they're just too spooked. The Air Force has made a, an art form of uh, ridiculing people who have talked about this thing. This seeming reluctance by journalism, science, government, and religion to fully explore the possibility of extraterrestrial visits has left the job in the hands of untrained, underfunded private organizations and individuals. Invariably, such private efforts attract people whose minds are already made up and whose approach is far from professional or scientific. Ufology has made important strides in recent years, but when you consider that contact with an alien civilization would surely rank as one of the most significant events in human history, it would seem that a more organized type of study might be warranted. If we know anything about science, it is this. The truth is always changing. What is science fiction today is science tomorrow. For instance, back in the 1800s, the scientific establishment scoffed at persistent reports from peasants and farmers and other country folk about rocks that fell from the sky. It took more than 100 years for the French Academy of Sciences to finally concede that meteorites were real. And just one generation ago, most scientists would have argued that life beyond the Earth is impossible. That is no longer the dominant viewpoint. In the days ahead, we will take you inside the government's own files to examine previously secret studies of the UFO phenomenon. We'll also try to find out if there is any connection between UFOs and the mutilations of cattle and other animals taking place across the West. We will explore what impact an alien landing might have on religion and other social institutions, and we will reveal the identity of this man who says the government has already established contact with aliens and is testing alien technology right here in Nevada. Now, George, you said that UFO groups have made improvements. Is ufology a real science now? Well, well, they call it they call it ufology, but even uh, even they will concede it's not really a science. It is making strides. If you take MUFON, for example, the Mutual UFO Network, uh, they restrict their membership only to people who are invited. So you weed out some of the crackpots. Uh, their, their membership has doubled in the last two years. They have 75 PhDs who serve not only as members but mm -hmm. consultants. Uh, you know there, there have been college courses taught on, on UFOs now on several campuses and eight PhDs have, have been written on the subject. So it's not a science but it's moving in that direction. A lot of people aren't going to believe it until they see absolute proof. What would be proof? Well we'll be talking about through the course of the week but uh, I mean if eyewitnesses 
millions of eyewitnesses count as proof in, in other in other kinds of proceedings. Uh, you got photos, you got movie footage, you got video, you've got uh, all, all kinds of physical manifestations, uh, radiation, uh, landing sites, things of that nature. Uh, you know, it's, it's the totality is what you really have to look at. And of course, we'll be we'll be taking a look at what constitutes proof through the course of the next several days. Okay, George, sounds great. Forward Thanks. part two. Thank you, George.